My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Rimworld Ice Sheet Survival Challenge. We're back with our tribal colonist Cobra as he takes care of a little bit of fishing out on the ice sheet just to ensure we keep our food reserves stocked up. Now, as you can probably tell by our base here, I've managed to do a little bit of work off camera. I've expanded the size of our main base here and I've also put down a research table and stool so we can start getting some research done. The only other thing that happened before I started recording was our friend the Galatros has decided to leave the map. Luckily he didn't come after our food supplies because that would have been pretty bad had he decided to consume the meat we've got stacked up for ourselves. Uh, instead, he just opted to wander off due to the lack of food. As it stands, notwithstanding the insects on the map and the insect jelly by the hives, there's no other source of food available for us at the map, and we don't have too much meat left in stock, which is why i take taken the decision to set up a fishing zone over to the west and allow Cobra to do a little bit of fishing from time to time just to ensure we can keep our reserves stocked up just somewhat. So the next morning then we'll begin with a little bit of pinny bed meat. Our food bar is pretty much empty. So one filling meal there and we can do some cleaning apparently. Okay, I thought we were going to head off fishing but apparently not. Oh, transport pod crash. This is a banished colonist named Weasel. They're crashing nearby, and they are from our enemy, the Savexa Coalition. Let's see where they are landing. Okay, so here's a colonist here. They're bleeding out in 18 hours. The injuries aren't that severe. Uh, they have a stab wound on their left arm and a cut on the left leg that is causing some blood loss. In terms of their gear, they are wearing mittens, a sheep wool skirt and a casual t-shirt. The mittens will definitely help us if we can get our hands on those. As you can see, however, the negative or the maximum minimum comfortable temperature, if you follow, isn't that much different to ours. But if we can grab those mittens, it will give us that little boost because we don't have any hand protection at the moment. So I think what we'll do here is we shall prioritise stripping Weasel of their clothing. We may as well make use of anything that we can. And then we'll haul Weasel back to our base. We won't take care of their wounds. We will leave them to bleed out. And then we shall use their corpse to increase our stockpile somewhat. Obviously we don't have the cannibal trait nor do we have the cannibal precept or meme for our religion. The closest we have is that cannibalism is considered acceptable. So I'm not sure if we're going to get a mood boost from the act of cannibalism. However, at the very least, I don't think we'll get a mood debuff from it. So we'll let them bleed out. Oh no, they've left the map. Well, that was unfortunate. I really should have taken care of them personally. I didn't think they'd get up and wander off, but clearly they did. So that's one source of food. I just decided to leave the map, which is very frustrating. And a life lesson learned there for Cobra. Don't leave them to bleed out themselves. Take care of them yourself. And yeah. So we'll continue on with our daily routine which is primarily researching at the moment look much like in the previous series i have gone ahead and set this back to rule b for the tech level advancing i've set the slider to 75 percent i've left the higher level tech cost factor at times 10 and the discount is negative 50 percent as before, because we are tribal, research does take a little bit longer than it would an ordinary spacer colonist. 
So this initial few research projects aren't going to take us a fair bit of time while we get our intellectual level a little bit higher. We did start with level zero, but we did allow ourselves a two star passion, so it will increase fairly quickly. So it's all swings and roundabouts there. Just checking there was nothing else on the map we could eat, and as it stands there's not. Obviously we are going to want to avoid the insects for as long as humanly possible. But if it's a difference between life and death, then at some point we might do a night run into the insect base to haul some of this insect jelly back. And we can at least extend our rations with that if we absolutely must do. I'd like to avoid doing that where possible, just so we don't run the risk of aggroing the insect hive. For now, we're just going to have to hope that we have another transport pod crash or some more animals wander onto the map, or Randy Random is kind and gifts us a herd of migrating animals that pass through. We have enough food for a day or two. We can always extend our rations with a bit of fishing, and I think it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and do that now, actually. While we have the food available, we may as well extend it as much as we can so we don't have to do this when we're starving. And of course, we don't want to be doing this when we're suffering from something like food poisoning either, because the constant vomiting will reset the progress constantly. And that's something that's going to make life a lot, lot more difficult. One mild problem, and it is only a mild problem, is because of the higher temperatures outside, as we can see it's plus 5 degrees, our storeroom temperature is in and around 9 or 10 degrees. So while the meat is classed as refrigerated, it's not frozen, and it is running the risk of spoiling, so we want to make sure we don't lose any food unnecessarily. Obviously once we advance into the winter months, that will change and everything will be frozen. But it will be something we have to monitor during the summer months when temperatures exceed zero degrees. Overnight things do freeze. As we can see here now our indoor temperature is dropping to around zero. And as you can see now they have reverted to frozen so overnight we don't have to worry about spoilage. But during the day it is something we want to keep monitoring quite closely. As we can see there, those minnows don't really provide much in the way of food. And in fact, as we can see here, their nutritional value is only 0 0.01. Compare that to the wolf meat, for example, which is 0 0.05. So you're getting five times more nutrition from the meat than you are from the fish. Now you can change this if you want by changing the catch size to medium or large fish, but this does take longer to actually complete the fishing task. At the minute we are set to small. So while we're getting quite a lot of fish per haul, as we've just seen there, they're not really giving us the greatest amount of food. So we'll try swapping it out for large. And I think we'll go ahead and just see how long it will take to complete one fishing order with the large catch set. Yes, it is taking considerably longer to complete this task with with the uh, catch size set to large. However, it might be one of those things where, is it, where it is worth the extra time and effort because the fish that you are catching sustain you for a little bit longer. But we'll see here, as we can see, we've been doing this for almost the entire day. And we're only just over halfway through the progress. Okay, so we want to have a look change. That is disappointing. Mainly because it will give us a negative mood modifier. Only a small one, as you can see there, negative two. Well, obviously all the others are stacking up quite rapidly. And it is dragging our mood down, so we are running the risk of a mental break. Last time we did get lucky, we just had a hide in the room a mental break but you can't always guarantee you're gonna have a nice one and the last thing we're gonna want is psychotic wandering 
where we're going to be wandering around on the ice sheet because while we do have some level of cold protection it isn't the best in the meantime however we have a caravan on the map not that we have anything we could really trade with them unfortunately but what we will do here is we're going to see what sort of nutritional value one catfish will provide let's see Okay, so that did absolutely nothing for us, unfortunately. So that entire fishing trip was pretty much wasted. And you don't really have the scope to do that sort of experimentation too much on the ice sheet. Not when you are reliant on the catchers. So we'll reset that to medium fish. And hopefully that will be the winning ticket for us, so to speak. We'll quickly go and see what this war merchant has for sale. They will take the casual t-shirt and the sheep or wool skirt. That will net us 24 silver. With that we could buy a little bit of pemmican. Buy 10 units. That's enough to, I think, half fill our hunger bar. It'll give us 50% fullness on the food bar. So we don't want to consume that. We want to haul that. Just quickly change that. So that's another half meal there. Better than nothing. And we did get rid of the two items of clothing that we weren't using anyway. So it was a positive trade for us, even if it's not going to change our long-term survivability. Okay, so while the research is always a nice idea, I would prefer to do some fishing. We only have this small stack of minnows available. And as we saw, they're not going to provide us the best nutrition. So, I mean anchovies, not minnows, but the point still stands. They don't provide the most filling meal. And the anchovies notwithstanding, we don't have anything else left available for food at the moment. So we really are in the lap of the gods at the moment, hoping we have a positive random event. Okay, so we have a koi. Let's see how much this will provide us in terms of nutritional value. Hopefully it's more substantial than the 0 0.01 afforded by the anchovies. Let's have a look. 0 0.10. Excellent. So that will fill 10% of your mood bar. Mood bar. Food bar. And as you can see, that is dwindling quite rapidly. We may as well consume the anchovies. They're not really going to make much difference to us overall. Now, one thing you can do, it's a little bit cheesy, but if one of the Trade Caravan members are using your seating arrangements to consume a meal, if you draft your colonists and order them to go to the stool, it will cause the Trade Caravaneer to drop the meal that they were about to eat. So that allows us to grab that for ourselves. As I said, it's a bit cheesy. But I suppose on the ice sheet, you have to take every advantage you possibly can and the way I'll just find it in my mind is I've seen times where the caravan members will wander into your stockpile and consume your food so we'll just call it a bit of quid pro quo okay so we'll have that pemmican we managed to scavenge for breakfast that took us up to 80 odd percent which is a decent boost on the food bar We'll do a little bit of recreational play here, and we have a lynx on the map. So we will prioritise hunting that lynx in a moment. We will allow Cobra to fill up his recreation bar, because that will give him a positive mood modifier. And then we will send him out on a hunting expedition. We'll grab that lynx for ourselves. It should at least provide us one full meal. We have a group of travellers wandering on through. I'm not sure where they are. Let's have a look. Where are they? 
perhaps they haven't quite wandered on yet. But we'll draft the Lynx to hunt. They have a 50% chance to revenge when they are attacked, so we have to be careful here. They are very fast, 5 cells per second. Compare that to Cobra's 4.2 cells per second, so we do want to keep our distance here. Okay, so the Lynx has gone Manhunter now, so we'll immediately start putting some distance between us. We have hit it once. That has affected its moving down to 68%, which does mean we are now faster than the Lynx. So we can afford to be a little bit more aggressive here. Not too aggressive, however. Okay, we are being very inaccurate here, Cobra. We've had one successful hit so far, which was the one that triggered the Manhunter phase. There we go, we've managed to finish off the Arctic Lynx, so we will haul it back to the stockpile. Here are the visitors here, just wandering through. They don't have anything to trade, or there's no interaction available, so we'll leave them to their journey. We might get lucky, they may trigger a social fight, and one of them may end up collapsing on the ice sheet for us. But we can't guarantee that. Okay, there we go. So that's 23 units of meat. So that's a decent enough meal. So the chief of the Trobo Treaty is looking for a researcher to join them. Given the fact we only have one colonist, Cobra, we won't be accepting that mission. Just knowing our luck, Cobra will head off to the Trobo Treaty to complete the mission. And we'll have all sorts of good events happening while we're away that we miss, so we'll ignore that for now. Plus, our research skill isn't the best yet, so there's a chance we could fail the mission. So, no new animals available on the map for us just yet. So, we're going to have to tap into the lynx meat that we just butchered up. So at least we managed to fill our bar from that. We've got eight units left over. So we'll do a little bit more research while we're in a decent enough mood before we head off to sleep for another night on the ice sheet. In the meantime, while Cobra's sleeping and resting up, we'll just quickly check there's nothing else on the map available. There isn't. Unfortunately, there is no notification when the wild animals wander on, so it's something you have to check manually. And you certainly don't want to be missing one, so we do check frequently, because they can wander on at any time. I don't believe there's any set pattern or time limit when the, the event may trigger. Alright, so we have a solar eclipse, which doesn't really affect us, as we don't have any solar panels. So we can disregard that, it will just mean it remains dark during the day for today. And that's it, we are now officially out of food. So let's prioritise the fishing, because there's no point doing the research if we have nothing to eat at the end of it all, and we end up starving. Right, so we managed to catch a single unit of perch not sure that's going to do much for us long term but i suppose it's better than nothing that'll fill us up by five percent which won't even take us out of the red i don't believe nope okay so i think the plan for the tonight if we get a chance, is to quickly run into one of the insect hives and grab some of the insect jelly that's on offer. Let's see if we can accomplish this without disturbing the hive. So we'll prioritise hauling the insect jelly. They are all asleep at the moment, as we can see. 
two of them have entered hibernation. So they are technically classed as incapacitated while they hibernate. However, the Mega Spider and the Spellipede are just asleep, so they can wake up. Let's see what happens here. Okay, a successful trip through there. Brilliant. So we have a little bit of food. The other positive from consuming insect jelly is you do get a nice mood or recreation boost as well. So we'll immediately consume the, consume some of the jelly. As we can see, that's filled both the food and recreation bar. So at least we know it is safe to run in there when they're asleep and grab the jelly and haul it away. So that's something we can do from time to time when needed. We have a few stacks down here. And there's one stack here. So there is stuff available, so... We are quite fortunate that we have the cave network with the insects on the map. So we will just have to micromanage this then and of an evening time we'll have to run in, help ourselves and run out. The major danger however is if we suffer a mental break then Cobra may override the disallowed instruction that currently exists by default on the insect jelly and in his mental state he may run in and consume it and I do believe that if I was to stand in the insect base and consume the insect jelly in front of them they would wake up they wouldn't take too kindly to it and they would quickly tear us apart and we'd be able to do nothing about it because we'd be suffering from a mental collapse so with that comforting knowledge in mind, the whole being able to run in and rob the insects, we'll focus on a bit of research for the next couple of days, I think. At least until something happens on the ice sheet, whether that be a random event or some animals wandering on. At least we don't have to concern ourselves with our recreation meter while we are living off the insect jelly. As we saw, it does fill it up for you as well, so you're getting a double hit there, both positive. Okay, so with the insects asleep, we will disturb Cobra from his own sleep and make our way through and grab the insect jelly down here. There's 30 units here, 8 here. That's enough for a couple of days worth of food. Hopefully we can do this successfully without disturbing the insects once again. There we go. Another successful raid on the insects. And in fact, while we're nearby, and since they've just dropped a 20 stack there, we may as well help ourselves to that as well. Okay, so it might be that our food situation, while not completely resolved, is at least abated somewhat, thanks to the insect jelly. So we'll allow ourselves a meal. And then we will head off back to bed, since we did disturb Cobra mid-sleep to go and consume... Sorry, to go and rob the insects of their jelly. So what we have to do now is just wait for this to replenish. Obviously we have the third hive over here which has a decent amount of available. And you may have noticed during all that we have ticked over into autumn. So the temperatures are now going to start dropping on the ice sheet. So our temperature is something we are going to have to keep an eye on because there's a chance we will start becoming hypothermic once again now that we're no longer in the mild summer months. So one of the things we are going to want to beeline researching is more advanced clothing. Not that having that available does much good if we don't have the raw material available to do anything with it. And I don't even think we can make patch leather. 
I do think you need a proper tailor's bench to make patch level, which we don't have. And I don't even think we can construct one. No, we cannot. I think that comes with advanced clothing. And I do think that is a medieval tech level research. Obviously, we are still a Neolithic, so that's off the table for now. Cobra's now up to level 5 intellectual, so we've progressed quite nicely on our intellectual skill. Our animal skill has also jumped up to almost level 2. Each level of that is obviously going to make the fishing expedition a little bit faster. I'm not sure if it increases your fishing yields or not, but it does increase the work speed. So that's one positive there. Hopefully it will increase the fishing yield as well. We shall have to find out. At least we are not overly reliant on the fishing. We do know we have the insect jelly that is safe to pop in and grab. What do we have here? So a desperate refugee named Wayside is approaching. They claim to have lost their settlement in an attack. They will offer to join us for a number of days. However, there is a chance they will turn around and betray you and attack you. However, we will accept the quest. Here comes Wayside now. He wants to stay for five days. Let's just have a look at his gear. I think you can see where this is going. We'll grab Wayside down into our stock room. We can now name our tribe and our colony. Let's have a look here. The people of the pond? Huh, no. I'm looking... I'm not sure what I'm looking for, really. Just something that fits in with the theme. There we go, that will do. Tribe of Kakum. And our settlement name can be... White Engo. I suppose that is quite fitting, given the fact we're on the ice sheet and our surroundings are pretty white. Yes, anyway, as I was saying, with Wayside, what we'll do is we'll bring him to the stockpile room. We'll strip him of all his gear. This per okay, so they are refusing to drop some items. However, we have managed to drop their weapon. And you can see where this is going, I am sure. Given that Wayside is unarmed. Cobra will fulfil his psychopathic tendencies and just slaughter Wayside for himself. Chances are he would have turned on us anyway, so we're just jumping the gun. And out here on the ice sheet, you can't be looking a gift horse in the mouth. Let's see here. Bleeding out in 14 hours. Don't want to make the same mistake we did with the colonist who dropped onto the map earlier. There we go. Cobra. Not Cobra. Wayside has passed away. The quest has failed. Don't really care about that. So we'll allow the hauling of the corpse. Strip them of their clothing, bring them into the stockpile. So that's at least improved our food supply somewhat. Let's get all this gear hauled inside before it deteriorates out on the ice sheet. So one final check of the map overview. We have some more jelly available for us next time the insects go to sleep. That's great. No other animals on the map. So we'll butcher wayside. And then I do think we shall call it today for episode number two. We've learnt quite a lot today. I wasn't sure if you could run in and steal the insect jelly undetected. You certainly seem like you can, so that's good. So that's something to bear in mind. We obviously had our fingers burnt with a colonist who crash landed onto the map and then got up and walked away before we could bring them back ourselves. But learning from that experience, we then 
decided to take matters into our own hands with Wayside once he was incapacitated and finished him off manually. At least that guarantees he wasn't going to wander off and deprive us of a decent meal. So thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the episode and you're looking forward to the rest of the series. Hopefully it's going to be a bit longer and a bit more successful than the previous series that we had that had to be abandoned due to mod issues. If you did enjoy the episode, go ahead and leave a thumbs up down below. Any comments, feedback and suggestions are welcome down below. I do read them all. But for now, all that remains for me to say is, as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.